Alright, so it's been a while, but we're actually doing the fucking DLC guides. I did tell you would get it done, so, okay, so here's the stats that you want. Now, something that I need to mention here is that our stats that we ended the last part of the guide on, it is different now. So, you might want to go to Rosaria and change your stats to reflect these. Basically, the main difference is we're not got, we've only got 30 endurance now, and, uh, like, those points have then been pumped in as much strength as we can get. Um, basically, we're going for a strength build for the rest of the DLC and the weapon that we're going to use is in this DLC. So yeah, uh, basically just go to Cathedral of the Deep and speak to this guy and he'll take you to the DLC. And we're right at the end of the game, this is when we recommend you to start the DLC. Because all the DLCs are pretty hard and especially Freed um, is the boss in this, is in my opinion now the hardest boss in the whole series. Uh, at least for Dark Souls 3. So turn around and get the blue moss. Ultimately, you're never going to use them, it's just to get rid of frostbite as far as I'm aware. But you can run along here, get the uh, the bonfire, and it's, it's pretty self-explanatory, you're just watching what we're doing. But you can see an item down there, but I'm going to leave that there now, just to kind of show you the orientation of this place. But these guys are um, Farron followers. Now, you kind of don't want to get ganged up on these guys, there's a lot of enemies in the DLC, just in general. So basically, well, I'm just going to try and bait them out one at a time. Now there's a, an, an item up there that you see, we'll come back around to get that and you'll see that a bit later. Um, these guys are like super, like, we will be changing our weapon from the uh, broadsword, but the weapon, at this point, like just at the start here, it's fairly, it's effective at taking care of the Farron Follows essentially. Like three hits and they'll be dead. So yeah, there's the item that we'll come back to get soon enough. Now you can just use throwing knives or whatever. I mean, obviously you can just run in and just kill them, but I'm just being careful to show you that it's, it's easy enough to kill them. Yeah, if you already have a strength build and you already have a strength weapon, Oh yeah, that's true. You could just run in one shot all of them. Unless you've obviously time. been following the guide, like, word for word. But um, eventually it does get to a point, um, oh and yeah, you can kick them if you've got the shield up and you can pretty much like just one shot them. But if you've been following the guide one for word, word for word, you'll be uh, at this point anyway. So, you know, we just want to make sure that you're not going to, you know, be suffering anyway. See those Dark Souls 1 PvP techniques, the <laughs> uh, pivot backstab, practicing for the remaster. Can't wait. So there's um, a snow, that like whole bit's a snow drift. If you run, it'll drop you down. So we're just gonna like pick up, the, there's like two items here. Now these farm follows, they can drop the entire follow set. Like that. <laughs> yeah, Titanite shards and large Titanite shards. Um, now the thing is, is I have one hundred. I have a cheat engine on right now and it's 100% drop rate. So it just kinda, every, every enemy will drop as much as they can drop essentially and it's just to kind of show you that that's what they can drop this is not reflective of your game <laughs> not even slightly think of this as like a press demo aye <laughs> <laughs> so these are the uh, human flies and they can drop human pine resin i don't know why he didn't at that point but yeah and then you pick up um I think I was the, like, the drop yeah. rate was at a hundred <laughs> oh I, frankly, I, I actually have no idea why it didn't drop anything because the rest did, of them do by the way you pick something up Oh no, that was the, it's like, it's a dark gem or something, or a oh, poison gem. Alright, okay. Maybe okay. we can drop that too. So, uh, you can pick up uh, another, some blue moss. Now, the, we're going to get that item that I showed you earlier. Now, there's a wolf down here, and to get the item you want to hug this wall, but quickly kill the wolf as soon as, it, like, as soon as you can. Make sure it doesn't finish howling, because if it does finish howling, you'll get attacked off a, like, literally about 12 wolves. And if you look up on that cliff there, not, you can't see it just now, but there'll be a giant wolf that will show up, and he'll fight you later. So these are like the tree lady things, tree women, and they'll drop a lure and skulls. Torches! Tree <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> okay, that's what they're called for now, these are birches. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, now, only the ones whose hair is like waving in the wind will be the ones that are like, I don't know, aggressive, I suppose. But... Yeah, those are the real birches. <laughs> <laughs> fucking hate you. Okay, so if you run up here, like, if, if you go even slightly too far, all four of them get up at the same time and it's a pain in the ass. Again, if you're good at the game, like, it doesn't matter, you can just run up and kill them, it's not going to be an issue for you. But, you know, it just, we're just being careful to show you just little, like, tips or whatever to just make things a little bit easier if you're just fucking garbage. So, 
the tip here is to just slowly edge up as much as you can until you can just lock onto one and then throw a throw knife and then that will bait out one at a time. Now it seems to me it's really hard to bait out one of the last two. You kind of basically just need to fight them both at the same time. But it is two basic enemies who gives a shit. It's not, you're not going to have that. I mean if you're having that much of a problem with two basic enemies, just you might as well stop playing currently. But you won't have that much of a problem because it's not that bad. See, they just kind of like both get up. Um, if you just pass a certain point, these two ones do seem to just both get up. I mean, you could probably like, use a bow and shoot them or whatever, but ultimately it's not a big deal. So that was the, uh, the follower javelin. It's, it's, it's a spear that you can throw. It's pretty cool. Um, and almost entirely useless. Uh, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I mean, at least if you're concerned with PvP. Oh, so by the way, all the wolves can drop moss fruit, as you saw there. Now, moss fruit will be actually quite useful for the next DLC, but... So you might want to just stockpile them, realistically. Um, it'll help with, like, curse. Because there's, like, bits in the next DLC that will curse you. So I'm just re realigning myself with uh, the body that fell down from the snowdrift. And these are, like, the two items that you saw. So there's more wolves here. Now, you want to kill this wolf here because out of the wolves that get up, there's always, like, packs of three. Um, one of them will howl. And when it howls, like I said, it summons other wolves. And you don't want that to happen whatsoever. Because it's a pain in the ass. So if you kill that wolf immediately, then it won't summon all the other wolves at one point. Um, so there's another pack down here, as you can see. Again, there's another wolf that will howl. It seems... I don't know if it's just me, but it looks like it's a little darker than the other wolves. And then that's the ones that howl. It so, looks bigger. Uh, yeah, like... It, there's def yeah, this one. That kinda... one's definitely darker, but the other ones seem a bit bigger. Aye, I, I don't know what the deal is. But these are pretty much the only two, like, wolf packs that are going to be... An, an issue and there's this other one wolf but he won't like howl or anything so it's okay but you will hear the big wolf at this point so you want to make sure you kill this wolf as quickly as you can that way you're not getting attacked off the big one and all the other wolves that's that's nobody wants that to happen you've had two games of practice for fighting big dogs <laughs> so you've had sith and you had the the, the rat that wasn't a rat it was just yeah, a big dog. Rat dog thing. Yeah, it was just a big dog. So that bite attack there that you saw, where it done like two bites, that's kind of like your main sort of opening for attacking. Um, at least, and this attack here is also is quite hard to dodge. But I'm also sh really shit at the game, so it might just be me. But as you see, there's that, that double bite thing, and then that's my opening that I use. Realistically, he's not that he's not that difficult. You know, you just make sure you can just dodge to the side or dodge back. It, he, when he does the charge thing, you want to sort of like. If you dodge backwards, if you like sort of angle it correctly, you can like dodge into where he lands and get a hit. But again, ultimately, you can just be patient and just uh, wait. Now, when you kill him here, it will drop large Titanite shards, and you can also just completely avoid them as well. You can just completely, you can still just run round. Um, there is a point in this level where we're just gonna completely fucking ignore him because it's not worth fighting him. You don't get anything good. Uh, is that the slope with all the wolves? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Again, I want to recommend that you do this DLC just before you go to do the Soul of Cinder. As much as the en the basic enemies aren't too bad, except from the Millwood Knights that we're just going to come up to, um, given the upgrade materials that this DLC gives you, it seems to imply that you shouldn't be doing this DLC right at the end of the game, but that's wrong. You want to be doing this both DLCs just before the Soul of Cinder because you're going to have such a hard time if you're not. Yeah, if you're under leveled, every single one of these Millwood guys is like fighting a Havel. Oh, it's, yeah, yeah. They're, they're so unbelievably tanky. They take like five backstabs at this level. So, uh, you can avoid this Millwood Knight here. We're kind of just going to be... We don't want to fight them. They're not worth it. They don't They don't actually really drop anything useful. Um, so, as you can see, we're kind of stealthing round, and then we're going up and round this hill. And this is... Um, there's, got, there's like a couple of items up here that we want to get. Um... But we we're also getting shot from the tower as well, so you want to like avoid that. But once you move far enough up this hill, um, it won't really like see you. So I'm just going to speed up killing these trees. Um, you don't need to kill them. You can technically just run up and grab the item and run away. But you'll get wolves chasing after you, and you don't really want to have to deal with all these tree women and the wolves. As you saw there, there's some wolves on the cliff edge. You want to quickly kill them whilst you've got less trees attacking you. Again. If you're alright, if you're alright at the game, you can just run and grab the item. It's not an issue. But I just want to be careful. So, with these what Millwood Knights, the well, the Millwood Knights here won't chase you. So you can just run up and grab the item and run away. As you can see, the wolves are chasing me, and I don't want to fight the wolves with tree women attacking me with their fire attack. That is gonna be a pain in the ass for anybody. But you don't need to fight the the Millwood Knights there. And a lot of this guide is um, you know, 
A good guide will tell you how to do things. Metal Gear Souls. Aye. You don't need to do everything, essentially. Now we're going to come up to this cliff face here and we can see that Millwood Knight hidden behind the wall. Again, we don't want to fight any of them, realistically, but um, here is where we're going <coughs> to essentially orient ourselves before we make a run to the tower, basically. So I'm just kind of showing you where we are. Now remember, the tower was, uh, you was a Millwood Knight shooting you from the tower, but we're just going to run past it and there's a blessed gem behind this wall. So just don't fall off, don't be an idiot. And now we are going to do the, well, just the tower essentially. Basically the rule for the tower is just climb right up to the top and then as you drop down you pick up all the items. And sadly there is a few Millwood Knights here that are just straight up unavoidable for fighting. But there is a strategy for one of them that you can just basically kill immediately. So you'll get, I mean it might just be me that I'm super shit at the game, but you can see that the Millwood Knights really give me an issue. Um, and if they give me an issue, they'll probably give at least someone an issue. Uh, they're kind of like those, um, they're like Lothric Knights, but way fucking worse. Yeah, see when you're lining up your backstabs, by the way, don't aim for their back. What you want to aim, you want to look at where their feet are positioned, and you want to always aim for the, like, the spot between their feet. That's what you want to have, like, exactly opposite you. Don't aim for where their back is. It's the same with, like, Silver Knights in Dark Souls 1 where like the spear ones and step into the attack so you actually want to backstab at their back foot instead oh. of their back because that's currently their side on hitbox so just make sure you're landing the backstab in between their feet instead of like what angle their back is facing i mean you kind of saw it there actually yeah, yeah. so um, is the backstabs is definitely the best strategy for these guys it's you, the only strategy you, you don't you definitely don't want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe. and as you can see i've got 100 percent drop rate on and that guy just dropped tight night shard they can also drop uh, heavy gems as well, just kind of depending on what they're using. Now this is the strategy for the other one. This other one is actually a buffed Millwood Knight, because he's got red eyes. But he's standing right on the edge of the tower, so he doesn't aggro straight away. We're going to two hand, and we're going to walk up to him. And basically as soon as he turns around, you're just going to fucking spam attacks at him, and it should push him off the edge. Um, which is basically what you want. Because you don't want to fight them. You, you just don't, you don't need to fight them. Even well, if you're good at the game, it doesn't matter. You're not going to get fun out of it. Oddly enough, he seems to have no poise. Uh, yeah. Whereas all the other ones just seem to stand there as if you're like hitting them with a fucking like half cooked spaghetti noodle. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it kind of it just kind of depends if they're in attack animations or not, but they just always seem to be in attack animations. Aye, uh, it's just one continuous attack chain. So we're climbing up the tower essentially, and now we can start picking up the items and dropping down. Uh, there's a soul packet here. You kind of what you want to be using all the soul packets and. Um, and then it's Captain's Ashes as well. So I think that's, you give that to the hag at Firelink Shrine and you can buy the Millwood Knight armor. Nah, she's just really grateful. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, thanks, buddy. Uh, so we picked up the, fuck, oh, I can't remember what we picked up. I think we picked up um, the Millwood Knight axe there, which is actually the item that we're going to be using. That is now our main weapon. It is very good. It's, it's without a doubt, like, of all the weapons that I tested, me personally, I was even able to beat Madeir with it, easily, compared to other weapons I find it a, a, a struggle. So as you saw there, we just dropped down and get the, you know, killed the crystal lizard. By the end of these DLCs, you'll have so much upgrade material, you can pretty much do whatever you want. So unlike the other guides, it was actually me that recorded this particular guide, and at this part I died, because um, I kind of misjudged something slightly. What Tony's trying to say is that I wouldn't have died, and that's the important thing to take away here. <laughs> yeah. So, right, you want if this is the end of the game, you want to have the coiled sword fragment at the at the ready. At the same time, you also want to have like a homer bone ready. But also, this point, this actual bit that I'm about to do is super pointless, and me dying didn't actually even matter. You don't even need to do this part because the only thing you're going to pick up is a heavy gem and homer bones. So I'm making a big deal out of nothing, realistically. You probably don't even need to do this bit. You don't even need the homeward bones, you've got the coiled sword. Exactly, right. But if for whatever fucking reason you don't have the coiled sword, and you need homeward bones, um, these guys here that you see, I ran in too early. You want to wait until they're like a little bit further ahead, essentially. Unless this is the correct footage, I'm not sure. But you run ahead and you grab this heavy gem here. And once you've done that, no, this is, this is the footage where I get caught. So I didn't leave it long enough for them to kind of walk around that building to the left. So basically... You know, if you'd have dodged that wolf, you'd have probably been fine. Yeah, and then because I fucked this up here, and then yeah. I've, yeah, now they're chasing me. As you can see, I fucked up super hard. But realistically, you could just get the heavy gem and, like, 
run. I almost could have like made that as well for one for the fucking stupid wolf. If you didn't get caught by that wolf at the start, I think that was the first like falling domino. Yeah. And then the rest just sort of happened. So you'll see at this point that I'll leave them to walk uh, a bit further ahead, and that definitely like helps. Um. She's about a bit, uh, cheat engine reset magic. Yeah. Sorry, collector's edition. <laughs> 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 so there you go, picking up the heavy gem. At this point, you can just kind of run away from this guy and just homer bone back if you have the coiled fragment. But like I said, they've now walked around that building to the left, and if you take a wide arc, one of them will. You might get chased off one of them, but it should be okay. Again, it's just homer bones. I have an amount of them. But at this point, you do want to go back to Firelink Shrine because we're now going to be changing our weapon up. At this point, if you're doing it at the end of the game, you should have enough upgrade materials to fully upgrade the Millwood Knight Axe, which is what we're going to be using. And then you want to make it heavy as well, because we're going to be pumping all the stats into strength. That is, of course, if you're following this build, but if you are following the build, then this is what you want to do. Uh, right, so, just going down to the... I'm pretty sure it's called the Millwood Axe. We'll see you in a second. Something like that, oh, yeah. I just went right past it. Yeah, that's Yeah, the... Millwood Battle Axe. So you want to upgrade that to plus 10. And so... I discovered that this, for the stats that you can use this weapon at... You have two. <laughs> uh, yeah, because this was like a, a weird mule build. Ah. Uh, some, someone dropped me a whole bunch of stuff before I'd done the DLCs. Ah. So, yeah, you for making the Millwood Axe raw, there is no weapon in the game that does more damage, attacks as fast as it does for the, its stats as low as it has. It, without a doubt, it's like... For that sort of ratio, it is the absolute best weapon so in the game. So basically, you don't want to invest in strength beyond the minimum stat. No, 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 you do want to invest in strength if you make it uh, heavy. So, oh, we're so oh, I thought you said you made it raw. No, no, I'm just saying if you made it raw compared ah. to the raw broadsword. Okay. So we're back here where you can see that hidden Millwood Knight. And this is the um, the hill that we were talking about with the fucking... That, this wolf. Don't, don't bother. If you're doing this guide... Uh, when we say to do it, you get nothing out of this fight. You get attacked off about 40 fucking wolves. The big one is more of a pain than it needs to be. The big wolf doesn't drop anything useful, so just run away. It is fucking irrelevant. It drops glory. Um, it, I think it drops a titanite chunk or large shards. Either of which, it doesn't matter. You can buy them at this point. It doesn't matter. Unless something's dropping a slab, it's fucking irrelevant. <coughs> So we're just going to light this bonfire here, um, just because it's might as well while you're here. But it's we're, another warp location. Yeah. Um, now there's a couple of other items. Now this hill that we're going up to, this is actually the hill to the left of that snowdrift that we dropped down at at the start. Um, you pick up some black fire, but I don't know why there's like, of all the fucking irrelevant items they could give you, they give you some black fire bombs here. It's just filler item. So as you can see, once you pump in a few more points into strength, you can actually one-shot these guys two-handed. Uh, now this thing, the, we the reason this weapon is so amazing is it has a self-buff. And the self-buff is, it has it does this, you'll see it later on when we it's use it. It's called Battle Cry or something, isn't it? Something like that, but you run, you charge ahead and it has like this force, kind of like semi-force thing, and it knocks enemies back. Now this is the absolute fucking best weapon in the game for fighting NPCs. Without a doubt, it will annihilate every NPC or humanoid-like enemy just because of the amount of poise damage that this fucking thing does on its um, weapon art. And then it gives you like a physical attack buff. It allows you to like one shot or two shot a lot of weapons when the buff is active. And it's one of those buffs that you don't need any FP. It drains FP if you have it, but you don't need any FP to use it. So there's some wolves up here. And again, there's only one more item to get. And I'm just killing these so it's, they become less of a pain in the ass. And I don't get overwhelmed and like one shot off them later on. But the last item here, I'm pretty sure, is just some large Titanite shards. Um, it, again, it's an irrelevant item to pick up at this point. You super don't need to do it, um, especially if you're doing this guide when we tell you to do it. But there's the item there. As you can see, there's just a whole bunch of these um, birches to kill. <laughs> it's sticking! <laughs> <laughs> so, so they have this grab attack as well. Please, avoid this. This should not have happened. Um, oh, could be well getting frostbit. <laughs> <laughs> and this was so irritating because I was so cl I was one hit away from killing it to pick up this large titanite shard that's fucking irrelevant. Now I'm gonna go down the hill slightly here, and you can see there's the snow drift. There's um, more wolves. Yeah. So you could you could essentially after you drop down from the snow drift. Uh, you could just, instead of going round to the Millwood Knights, take a hard left and run up this hill. 
you can do that if you like, but then obviously you miss out on the battle axe and all the other items, so that's why you want to do the other part. Because obviously the battle axe is fucking incredible. The battle axe is so, so good for doing the bosses. Um, it only attacks ever so slightly slower than um, like a longsword, but it does yeah. so much more damage than like any other heavy like he any other heavy longsword. So. A lot of people underestimate like just the battle axe move set. It's really fucking good. It's quick. Yeah, yeah. It's quick, and you do get a, a good bit of damage out of an axe with some nice investment. And that, as Tony said, the weapon up for this one is insane. Yeah, so it's really fucking even good. if base damage wise, longsword's done more. The fact that the weapon art is so intensely incredible it is why is why we recommend to use it. What about that six sword art online weapon art you get with long swords though? What one? The one where you just like dash through people and stab them. What the fuck one is that? Have you not seen the one? It's the one where you, like you hold it oh, like no, fucking sure. Obi Wan Kenobi and then you do like the stepping dash poke thing. So remember to run to the side there and pick up that item. Um, I think it was a hollow gem or something like that. Uh, so, lighting the bonfire in here, we also want, we want to run across the bridge at this point, um, just to get this bit done, if you... Get the get the ring off this birch as well. Yeah, I, I don't know why, I just, my fucking words didn't come out there, but... <laughs> so now, we are going to do the, uh, hidden boss. Um, there so... was, there was air quotations there, Tony didn't realise yeah. that you can't see them, but there were air quotations You can when see he it said, in my voice! When he said, hidden boss. So, <laughs> hit this, and it's, I mean, the reason it's not hidden is because you've already done something like this before, do you know what I mean? No, I don't recall. When was this? <laughs> fucking bit with all the skeletons and... Shut up. Right. So, you descend the ladder and it takes you down to the Great Hall... I mean, it takes you down into the, um... The sort of icy cavern area that definitely isn't the Great Hollow, apparently. Remember the Great Hollow? Do you remember the Great Hollow? I remember the Great Hollow. Well, so I was the developers. I they was can't there recently it. and prepared to die again and I just went, you know what? Fuck these items and just left. So, you can drop down onto this guy and do that, what I just done there. Um, fighting enemies on these branches is a super pain in the ass. You don't really want to do it at all. You want to get off the branches as quickly as possible. Now, there are some Millwood Knights here that you need to fight that's unavoidable, essentially. Um, the running attack with this thing is pretty good because it's also got quite good range for uh, like an axe-type weapon. So, it means that, like, getting that a... damage. Yeah, yeah, so you'll be able to, like, one-shot these. I think you can, um... Two shot followers if you've got the buff on, which is pretty pretty decent. And then, oh, that's without the buff, and you can two shot them. So there you go. So pick up the ember here. Now actually die at this point by uh, it's like so, there's so much variance, like in terms of what can happen at these bits. But there's an item up there that we're gonna get. A very good item. Um, so it's not that one there. We're gonna go off a set a little bit more. But you go up here as a Millwood Knight archer. We want to kill him because like the chances of him like knocking you off the edge with his fucking um, bow is like it's quite high. You really don't want to have to deal with it. Um, so now you'll see me use this weapon and why it's so good against um, NPCs. And again, the humanoid-like enemies. Now this is also showing you the way out of this area. Like most areas in Dark Souls that are like this, you can still get out via like climbing. So you can go back up here and then drop down the ladder and go back up if you need to. But obviously, considering that uh, you can just warp to any bonfire, it really doesn't fucking matter anymore. Who needs to backtrack when you can just TP everywhere? Ah, exactly. <laughs> so I thought that this guy fell off and died, but to my dismay, he didn't. Um, he's still floating about here somewhere. Actually, wait, apparently he didn't. Okay, never mind. Did he got him? There was other times where I've uh, knocked him off the edge and he was still alive. So basically, this is where I accidentally die. It's you can see how it is such a pain in the ass to like really keep a track of, to keep track of. So you, you want to keep moving here, by the way, because if you stay still too long, this guy will fucking shoot you. But for some reason, this guy runs down here and then knocks me off the edge that way. <laughs> such a pain in the ass. You could use the cat ring at this point. That if you do get knocked off, you won't take any damage. So that could be a, a, a useful thing to equip just in case that happens. So keep that in mind. But as you can see, I do the exact same thing, keep moving, and the guy doesn't come down and attack me for whatever fucking- So I don't know what the actual difference was in what I'd done here, but for whatever reason he didn't come down. So, you want to be super careful with this guy, I mean it's a total pain in the ass, but um, you can jump off at this point and then you can just like take care of this guy. The reason why I wanted- the reason why I wanted to kill this guy initially is because I didn't want him to shoot me and knock me off, but then in trying to kill him, I got shot and knocked off. So. As you can see, there's a lot of variance with this particular area. 
It just means that, you, you know, like, the ch if you don't kill this guy, the chances of you being shot and knocked off when you go to get the follower saber, which is a really great weapon, um, is, like, super high. So that's basically my reasoning for, like, killing this guy first. Um, Speaking of the follower saber, is it still good? Uh, yeah. 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 I know, like, for a period of time it was on top of the Carthus for a while. Yeah. But they, they, I've they not nerfed kept it up with patches. They did so. nerf the Carthus and No, I know they did that. That was like the last time I played was when they nerfed the Carthus. But they just kept the follow saber pretty much the same. Although the, yeah. there was a thing that offset the follow saber that actually made it pretty decent. I think they um I think it had less base attack or whatever. So they just kill this guy here and um That's uh, pretty much it. So there must be another reason for us coming up here. Yeah, the saber. Oh yeah, yeah, right. So, yeah, getting the saber. You <laughs> we were to, just talking about it. Uh, yeah, so you have to walk up. The, so the branches that you go to to kill that Millwood Knight that I killed, and then you have to drop off onto this one. I, as you can see, we just went straight past it. Um, but it's, it's just an alternative to the uh, Carthus curved. Yeah, uh, that's it. The follow saber is definitely one of the best weapons in the game. So if you want to, for some reason, like switch into decks, that's a good recommendation. If you're using weapon. weapon buffs and it's uh, fast hits quickly, yes. Okay, so something that I need to mention here is that the maps that were made said that there's two crystal lizards at this point, like in the middle of that sort of icy lake part. I tried looking for them, I cannot fucking find them anywhere, so you might be able to find these two crystal lizards somewhere. I per I cannot find them, so I I'll leave it up to you guys to quit and reload out and see if you can find them, but they, they just weren't spawning for me. I don't, Sometimes I I quit reload doesn't work though. Like, it doesn't work on some of the lizards in the Great Hollow and Dark Souls 1. Uh, oh, well, it, the lizards work differently in Dark Souls 2 between Dark Souls No, Dark I know, Dark. I know. But sometimes quit reload doesn't work. Okay, so before the boss, we're just going to do this, like, basically last bit of exploration in this area before the next part. Um, kill these tree women. Uh, I don't birches. think you... Birches. okay. Kill the birches and uh, pick up the Homer bones. Not that you necessarily need them. See, this is kind of the point that I'm making. Um, if the fact that the game's even given you Homer Bones at this point implies, and the fact that you're getting like large Titanite shards implies that the game's expecting you to come here a lot earlier than you, you realistically should be. Some people might have gotten rid of the Coil Sword. This is admittedly true, so if you're an absolute spastic, then <laughs> um, yeah, you might want these Homer Bones. Yeah, if you, if you, if you took the long-term loss for the short-term gain. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, this one particular tree is harder than all the rest of them for some reason. It's the only one that does that attack. Because it's a boss, Birch. <laughs> oh! <laughs> and, uh, so just watch out for its, it's like crazy attacks. Now, when you kill that one uh, tree, Birch, right, Birch woman, Birch, Birch. Um, Cunt. If you kill that one of them, this ladder will drop. Now, I can't remember if you need to kill all three of them or just that one, but just kill all three of them. Whatever. It's likely just that one because it's buffed. Yeah, probably, but for it's some the, reason... the special one. Yeah, that, now this ladder drops down, and, um... I should probably just speed this bit up, shouldn't I? Nah, what you do is you put the Metal Gear song as an overlay. Right, okay, I'll do that then. Yeah. It's fine, <laughs> Konami will claim it, but what don't they claim? <laughs> so, you can see that this ladder is, um, quite lengthy. You might want to skip ahead and... Uh, Maybe 30 seconds or something. I mean, honestly, just as a little tip to from, so if you might want to consider something more along the lines of a fucking elevator. Aye, or some kind of teleportation. Something that won't give me thumb cramp. Aye, so please, uh, stop Oh, it. and then you just put another one there. I just know, just as a nice wee cherry on top. <laughs> fucking dicks. So, I mean, so like I was saying about the crystal lizards, uh, at that bonfire down at the bottom, maybe if you quit and reload, the crystal lizards will show up. I, they just weren't for me. But uh, we're still claiming. Yep. The map said they were there. I'm just saying the map said they were there. Okay, so now we're finally at the top. We can get this Titanite slab. So it is worth the climb, admittedly. Um, <laughs> it's just worth, just about worth the climb, yeah. And I think that was a shriving stone. I think. Oh, that that, that just makes it better. The <laughs> what? Right, so this is a very small ladder, and this one takes... As you'll see now, that this leads this all the way Stockholm. back. This is Stockholm. This is like... <laughs> it's fine if it's a small... It's fine if he only beats me a little. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah. This is us back at this bonfire. So now we can just travel down to the depths of the painting, and then we can go and fight the boss. The good bit. Aye, the entertaining part. Aye. The bit we've all been waiting for. 
Except this boss the bit is, where uh, we get to test all the skills we've learned throughout this area. So as you'll see, the quit and reload happened there, right? We come back to this point. And for some reason, the crystal lizards just—they're just not there. I mean, you'd be able to see them, and I looked, and they're just—they're just not there. So I don't. So know I before do you leave, make sure you equip your scrub spell that makes you not die. Yeah, <laughs> that's if you have it. So just make sure you know you've. I mean, if you're following the guide, you have it. Yeah. Um, and you should use it. Admittedly, like yes, it's a bit of a crutch, but it is fucking good. Yeah. Like, it is. It is a. It is something that takes one mechanic out of the game briefly. So this boss can be done at this point in the game or you can drop down right at the end of the game essentially and do the boss then. But Either way you're going to destroy it. Yeah, this boss really, really isn't hard and after playing it a bunch of times I regret putting it as high as I did on my list. I don't think it deserves to be as high as it was. It's, it's cool but it's, it's not a good boss. So you kill the wolves immediately because they're the things that are going to give you the hassle when killing uh, this NPC. Now, Which you will destroy because of the axe. Yeah, so that's the thing. I have to be really generic in terms of like how I talk about fighting this boss, but with this particular weapon, you will never have an issue fighting this boss whatsoever. Um, you can just keep swinging and he's got very low poise and you can just break his guard like super easy with it. So, I, see, you can just keep doing that and then you just fucking destroy it. Now, the, the thing is, is that you do want to kill this guy as quickly as possible because like any other boss, if you're fighting two things at the one time, that's when it starts getting difficult. So, with most other weapons, chances are you, you'll you have a harder time killing that guy if you've got like a slower weapon perhaps. Uh, that might be, make it a little Or a weapon harder. that does less damage because Axe DPS is fairly high. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So fighting this guy, uh, the big wolf, is pretty much like fighting him earlier in the game. As He does that, that two bite attack that lets you get in hits like super easy. So yeah, like I said, um, fighting this guy just shouldn't be too much of an issue. Again, double bite attack, you can get your hits in. The self buff will, um, you know, make you do so much extra damage. Now, this attack here is like, it looks a lot harder than it actually is to deal with. Again, you can just kind of roll into it. it. Yeah, like roll with it. Yeah, it's a better way of describing it. Now, that wave, um, so you can just go kind of ham on you. But now this wave, you actually want to roll into it because when it... Like for a few meters when it comes out his mouth, if you roll into it as he's like casting it, it you can just you you won't actually take any hits from it. It's when you roll back from it, it kind of spreads and it turns it as one giant hitbox. So rolling into that's the sort of strategy for that. Um, and yeah, this attack here, you kind of want to roll with it. As you saw there, that was like a perfect example because you kind of land sort of close to him and then you can get hits in when he's recovering. So as you can see there, you just can roll straight into that attack and um, it becomes super manageable. The only thing with this guy is, is that if you do get hit, he can deal a fuck ton amount of damage to you. But if you've got a 100 block shield, you're not going to do too much, like... Yeah, he might break your guard, but it's not going to be too much of an issue. Um, but I think just waiting, like staying at a sort of middle, close distance and waiting for that double bite attack, that's just going to rinse and repeat that, essentially. And that's just gonna be your best way of fighting this guy. He's, he's not gonna. It's, it's hard to give strategies for bosses that aren't especially difficult. Like this, Dark Souls Two was like that. The guide was just full of like, oh, you just hit it and it'll die. <laughs> so <laughs> this guy shouldn't be too much of an issue if you just kind of look what we were doing. Um, that would just uh, take take you beating it. It did for some reason. It, like classic Dark Souls syndrome. He's on like a fucking pixel of health, and it's so hard. Suddenly to get he's Neo from the Matrix, and <laughs> you can't touch him. So you get the champion's bones, and you get Valor Heart. Valor Heart is a fucking cool as shit, um, like combo weapon in this game. That's like a sword shield. Super cool for PvP. Really, really cool weapon. Recommend using. It. It's a lot of fun. And you get the champion's ashes. Now the champion's ashes. If you burn it, Firelink Shrine. Um, you, it will unlock the arena for you. You should know this by now, but that's how you get the arena, and you activate the arena by sitting at the main bonfire, and it's like in the menu. If you want more information on Valorheart, by the way, we did a video on it. Or well, yeah. I did a video on it. When the DLC first dropped, I used it for like fucking, I don't know, like 12 hours straight. Yeah. And I was like, I know it. But so, yeah. uh, at this part, now you basically just want to sink pretty much all the souls that you get into strength, if you're following our build, which obviously we recommend. So we literally all the souls we get are getting put in strength at this point. Do you know what's really good about the Melwood Axe? You can almost use the build as if it's a dex build because it still has the speed. 
but you just do a fuckload of damage. Yeah, kind of, to be honest. You just yeah. need to mitigate, like, it's extra stamina cost, but you do so much damage. If you've got a weapon buff in there. Uh, basically, the, the ultimate goal is to be at 40 strength for when you're fighting Medir, and that will put you basically in the... Because Medir is the, is the final goal. He's like probably the hardest thing that you'll come up against. Sort of, like when you first fight him, you'll be the hardest thing essentially. So you kind of want to just make that as easy on yourself as possible and 40 strength is the way for going. At least in, you know, in my opinion, anyway. Anyway, that is the end of that part and we'll see you in part two where we fight Freed, who is actually technically the hardest boss in the series. Not Medir, but yes, yeah, it's, it's a weird dichotomy there. But anyway, see you next part.